Leading our bulletin this half hour, it all seemed like an action movie. Police opening fire on Lonman mine workers on a wildcat strike. Ten years ago today, 34 miners died. In the days leading up to the tragedy, 10 others, including security guards and police officers, were brutally killed. Union AMCO expects thousands to gather at the infamous Skopi to commemorate the day. Muloko Muloto, as well as Bulele Shwiti Jones, are there and join us live now. Perhaps to start with you, Bule, good morning. You've been speaking to a number of either those surviving mine workers or families of the victims that unfortunately lost their lives. What are they saying and what are they expecting to hear today as they commemorate 10 years since that very, very unfortunate incident that took place? Yeah, well, you know, this has just been described as the most lethal uh, usage of force by state, by the state, of course, in post-apartheid South Africa. We saw um, the massacre of about 34 mine workers, and till today, many families are still desperately seeking for accountability and answers, which they are yet to get. But just behind me today, this morning has kick-started with what you see, some of the residents and miners actually on the copy today, um, you know, just demonstrating in remembrance of those who had lost their lives in the Marikana a massacre. But 10 years on, the authorities are yet to action the majority um, of the binding recommendations, of course, which are put forward by the Farland Commission of Inquiry, established to actually probing this deadly tragedy. Um, so as it is today, we're expecting the, the leadership of ARM could actually address uh, some of the mine workers here, those will be anticipating to see what's the new message and what will be the answers um, going forward. Mm -hmm. no, it will be important to hear what going forward. Perhaps let's rope in Muloko, who's on the other side of the Kopi. Mm -hmm. Muloko, good morning on your part. We all remember that 12,500 that the workers wanted. Unfortunately, some of them lost their lives for that 12,500, a figure that many would say should be the bare minimum if people are to go underground daily and risk their lives. What are these mine workers saying has changed for them since that day when others actually sacrificed with their lives? Good morning, Fundo. Yes, it's been 10 years now, and obviously the blood of those who were killed here, the 34 miners who were gunned down by the police, had to spill before the mine, Lone Min Mine at the time, could even move and consider increasing their salaries. You would recall at the time, others were saying they were earning at around 4,000 rand a salary a month. And the past two days we've been here, as we were talking to some of the workers, they were saying, look, in terms of the salaries, there's not even a single mine worker who's getting below 12,000 500 rand. And as I say, that had to come through a sacrifice. Some people have had to pay with their lives. And others today are still living with the scars of bullets that have had to pierce through mm -hmm. their bodies. Mm -hmm. But also, there are 10 people who also were killed. We don't know by whom, because even at this point in time, no one mm -hmm was held accountable for the death of the 10 people. And today, as the workers of South Africa commemorates this particular important day on the calendar of South Africa, the, 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 the feelings are mixed. You still have those people who say President Cyril Ramaphosa, who at the time was a shareholder at Lon Min, must still come to apologize to the workers for sending that particular email urging the authorities to take action against the striking mine workers because many of them are really blaming him for that particular attack. But others, on the other hand, are saying it will be pointless. They would rather meet him in court where, as you are aware, they are suing him personally along with the mine for one billion rand. Earlier, Mfundo, when we arrived here, we saw a group of about 10 or so people who had gathered at an intersection next to the mine where majority of these workers are working at. This is about two or three kilometers away from the Kopi where the massacre happened. And those people, they were saying, look, we are here to stop 
workers who might want to go to work. They don't want anyone to report for duty today, saying that this is an important day, which everybody who works for Sibanya Mine or Sibanya Steel Water, which has uh, since bought Lon Min, must be here to be part of this commemorative event. But let me speak to this one worker who is joining us. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to us. What does this day, the 12th of August, mean to you as a worker? Uh, 2012, the embassy is in the embassy. The embassy is in the embassy. Nanga development, Usbana, as a cone we end the development, a Maragan, Nazin, the doctor of Zentel, Hulumet, as again, Juan and Gog, Abantuan Abalape Maragana, Abafunda, a high school, Abai Nagui College, Abastogola, Abazalbab, Abaf Mani Mali, Labour Bay Funa Usban, Usban, why take my game up? Me, what won't come at Yalaga loan me? Uzo up, Uzo at Mitagui, Manda went dig loot on a loan cellar. Who's born as me up and the Tina Dumbatilapa and Tabby in Go, Kunga Faba, Abantagu to Apa Gulenda, Babula, Lapa, police, Tina Stango celebrate, Winsley's of the Jukung, or Batastin, the Goband, Babula, and Kulment, Om Yamur Amapos. So Kunga goes born I bag at Cheta, Mosuba and Atoga and Cheta and Fen. Tietangomuntu well, Mfundo, in a nutshell, the gentleman is saying that uh, there were many promises that were made when Sibani Steel Water came to take over from Lonmin. It committed that it will be inheriting all the issues that uh, were still outstanding. He's lamenting that not much has changed really this area he says remains poor and of course the issue of salaries is still being mentioned here saying that they even want a salary increase right now but it's a tall order it's a matter that they are really not uh, making headway and of no. course the blame still goes to president Cyril Ramaphosa, as I said, some are saying he must come and apologize. Others are saying he should not even bother coming down. Mm. No. A very difficult day, though, today. Moloko, thank you very much for that update. We'll catch up with you as soon as the event does indeed get, get underway. That's Moloko Moloto as well as Pulele Shuti Jones out at the infamous Kopi. To this story.